the Lakers had this amazing comeback, right, yeah. against the Dallas Mavs. Win the game. They've now won three in a row, four of their last five. Everything since the trade deadline is looking up and up. Oh, yeah. The new guys are great. Vanderbilt, excellent addition. Yeah. Beasley, excellent addition. I mean, they are just clicking. And yet LeBron said he heard a pop yesterday. So they don't play again until tomorrow night. I believe they're at OKC. Got a double check. Yes, at OKC. Excuse me, at Memphis first, pardon me. Then at OKC. So they play Tuesday and Wednesday. It's a back-to-back. Now, normally I would say, well, of course LeBron's not going to play. But LeBron is the one who just said these last games are yep. the most important regular season games of his career, Perloff. Yeah, these are all important games. I think they're going to be fine because there are teams above them that are actually tanking who are still in the playoff picture because everyone gets in the playoffs now. So they're going to make the playoffs. Now, the I heard a pop and limping pretty severely after the game. Listen, he, he heard it in the third quarter, continued to play and play at a high level. So obviously it's not that serious to me. This is going to sound a little bit critical. Remember when Big Ben used to limp around a lot and talk about his injuries? You extensive? think he's milking it? I think LeBron has a flair for the dramatic. I think that when <laughs> I think if he has an injury, he will let you know about it. So I, I this does not scare me. I think this is just LeBron. Adding, you know, LeBron he's is not, ratcheting up the drama. He just talks a lot, and I think we ask him a lot of questions. Yeah. I think LeBron does like to sort of keep the attention on LeBron and everything going on. So this doesn't surprise me. This does not scare me. I think he's just setting up just a better story for when he puts it all together and this team does better than everyone expects. Well, I thought it was interesting when I saw a tweet from my friend Andrew Perloff yeah. over the weekend that said... Oh, said, I said I said last week I got in on the Lakers a plus 4,000. To win that, the title. To win the title. So <laughs> I put barely any money, but the yeah. payoff was huge. Now, it's already down to 2200 after the trade deadline. Yeah. That's a huge – it's almost yeah, it's a massive, 100% better. A massive drop. I reinvested more because wow. I will tell you right now, Anthony Davis being this good, as long as LeBron has one leg, this is this <laughs> team – I'm sorry, I'm not – this yeah, actually team looks like it kind of fits. Like you're more into the Lakers than I am. I think. I think that's fair to say. I, I don't think they're a title contender. I, I think don't that's either. still ridiculous. I don't either. But I think they're an interesting dark horse because the West. Who's really the favorite in the West? Who is really the unbeatable team in the West? If you give me Anthony Davis playing like he did yesterday. I don't look at them in a series against the Lakers and say this is going to be a sweep or anything. I think the West has a wide open feel, so why not take a flyer? It feels like more of a flyer year to me than a favorite year. And the yeah. Lakers are a flyer that happens to have Anthony Davis and LeBron James. I think it's not bad for a flyer, but I can't look at these. Listen, it was great yesterday against the Mavs, but I think the Mavs have their own problems, clearly. Mm, when Luke and true. Kyrie on the floor together... Obviously, you lose a lot of defense or any kind of defensive intensity. And so that, that goes away. Um, I think that there are a lot of flawed teams in the West, but I can't automatically say, oh, I think that, you know, here we go. Now the Lakers are title contenders. But I'll tell you what, man, I hate to, like, pile on Westbrook, but if this is real, it's not it, but, like, if this really was mm. the catalyst of just getting him out, well, LeBron deserves – criticism for that because he's the one who brought him in yeah, but it's true. the fact they finally got it, i can't even say out of the building because he's just at the clippers over the other <laughs> over the other locker room. but this team just makes a lot more sense vanderbilt yeah. who can play alongside anthony davis davis was excellent yesterday 30 points um 15 rebounds three blocks big jumper at the end like hit and turn around fadeaways. Yeah. I mean, when he can do that, it's incredible. Uh, Beasley didn't even have a good shooting game. You know, he was three for 14 and two from 11 from three. But the fact is, is he's out there getting wide open looks. You know, Schroeder has, I think, always been a solid point guard. Listen, bet on himself in a bad way. And then Hachimura, you're not going to be looking at him really for scoring. But uh, well, solid off the bench. The other thing, too. So they got Lola Russell Baba. Westbrook. If you look at the other contenders, it, this helps with my bet. Yeah, they sabotaged the Clippers by letting them get Russell Westbrook. <laughs> yeah. they were my they were my favorite title teams. I love Kawhi, but now come on, you can it's impossible for someone to win an NBA title with Russell Westbrook. He's just immediately going to kill your offense in the clutch. So you have Denver never does anything in the postseason. Memphis unproven. Sacramento very young. Phoenix is scary, but other than that. I mean, you have teams like Dallas, Golden State. Still, we don't know if they're going to be fully actualized. 
it has a wide open feel in the West. Absolutely, it does. I think it is setting up for Denver, though, just because if they have everyone healthy, then I think this is sort of like finally the year. Because if not now, then when is it ever going to happen? In yeah, terms but of they're not built. You know, them they, getting to the finals. Players like Luca and Joker are built for the regular season. Are they built for the playoffs? Well, I mean, that high usage sort of, it's a very James Hardeny where yeah. you get all the stats. Triple doubles are wonderful in the MVP voting. They don't really work in the playoffs. I, I'm not so into Denver. I know. Well, we put $5 bets and you put yours on the Clippers and I put mine on the Nuggets basically to spite you because you don't think Jokic should get a third straight MVP. This is, a, this is partly my Sixer fan and wanting Joel Embiid to win it. I don't think the Sixers are really built for a title either. Certain teams just seem to have that special formula. The Warriors had it last year. The Bucks had it with Giannis. Can you see, you know what I'm saying? Denver, something about Denver seems like a regular season team now. Want to know if the Laker fans out there are starting to believe at 855 2124 CBS, 855 2124 227. Stu's our resident Laker fan. You starting to buy it a little bit, Stu? Not as title contenders. I think they're a team that can win a playoff series, maybe. I they... mean, you win one playoff series if you're the Lakers. You forget the hype of them. <laughs> this could be off the charts. Why can't you win three? Who are you beating in this? For... If you were in the first round, if you win a playoff series, you're beating one of the top two seeds. Yeah, so... but then you would probably play a team like the Suns later. I don't know, or the Grizzlies later, or the Nuggets later. I don't know. They can maybe win a series. I'm not saying they're going to win a series, but I think they could maybe push a team and win a series. I'd be dubious of the Suns. I am dubious of the Suns. You'd be scared of the Suns. Or no, just... I'm, I'm not buying it. What? I, I know. but I totally buy that team. How can you not buy them? Because you're asking a team to gel on the fly with 20 games or whatever left. Maybe Kevin Durant's going to finally make his debut. What do we think? Wednesday, I think they have a game. So he's going to make his debut for the Suns. You just don't have a lot of time. We were talking about our boss, Spike Eskin, hosts, hosts the 76ers podcast called The Right Turkey Sanchez. And they just had Daryl Morey, the general manager, as their guest. And he said that when Harden was traded to the 76ers midseason, he underestimated how much time it was going to take for all of them to gel together. Now, maybe that's an excuse from the 76ers about why they fell short. But I think there has to be something to that. Well, I mean, you could add James Harden to the 92 Dream Team and they would have won the bronze. So I don't know what Daryl Moore is talking about. I mean, obviously, there's no team that James Harden is going to gel into because he can ruin any team. So that's a ridiculous point. It is true. Was, didn't Spike give us another stat? There hasn't been a midseason acquisition who's led them all the way since the 90s. Well, Clyde Drexler. Clyde Drexler going to Houston. Yeah, and the yeah. Rockets. And, and they had a couple other really you good You mentioned players, Rasheed obviously. Wallace sort of came in with Detroit. Different, wasn't the star, but yeah, no, was no. a key role player. I mean, the, again, getting back to this fact that the West is very undefined. I think Kevin, I, I'm buying Kevin Durant and the Suns. And, and the Warriors, too. The Warriors, Steph Curry comes back. All of a sudden, they're in the mix, too. I, I don't count anybody out in the West except for Sacramento. <laughs> I can't see that happening. Well, that'd be a fun story. They're the number three seed. I mean, that might be fun if the Lakers got to six and faced Sacramento in the first round. That would be a great first it's round. It's like, congratulations, Sacramento. You haven't made the playoffs in like 16 years. Here's LeBron James <laughs> and Anthony Davis who just made a late push to get into the playoffs.